but the, the, the bigger question is, is there something other than the containment and the, um, and the auxiliary building that needs to be protected? And there's actually two, uh, two things. The first is the switchyard, because you'd prefer not to lose off-site power. But the second is a, is a little building right near the water, and it's called the intake structure. Um, that draws in river water that cools the nuclear reactor and cools the spent fuel pool, even as we're speaking. So it's critical that inside that building that it stay dry. Now, they found in the, in the last couple of weeks as the water levels come up, they found holes in the concrete that they weren't aware of, and they have plugged them to keep that building dry. If that building melts, or if that building gets water in it, um, and those emergency service water pumps fail, then you've got a case where you're going to cause fuel damage. Now, what that means is that um, this happened at Fukushima. Um, there, when the tidal wave came in, when the tsunami came into Fukushima, um, the first thing that was destroyed was the emergency service water pumps. And we call that the ultimate heat sink. If you can't dump the heat from the nuclear core, you're going to eventually have fuel damage. So um, that same thing could happen at Fort Calhoun. I almost think we're looking at the two wrong structures. You know, we're looking at this massive auxiliary building and the massive containment. But the, the little building next door that there used to be a river there. Now it's, it's so flooded it's hard to see where the river edge was. That's the intake structure, and that's probably the most vulnerable. So it's really important that the um, emergency service water pumps continue to stay dry, and uh, I believe that's one of their, their main concerns.